guys, welcome back to the Art Barn Studio. I'm just here in my studio and I'm preparing another art lesson to go over with you. Today's lesson, we are gonna be doing Piano Cat. So, I'm gonna go over supplies and what you need to be drawing this Piano Cat with me. First, you'll need a piece of student paper. I'm just using white student drawing paper. You can get off Amazon. Check out my links below. It'll just take you right to what I use. I get the big pieces and cut them in half. Then you're gonna be using a permanent marker of some type, not a water-based, not Crayola, because we are gonna be painting this little piano cat. We wanna make sure that the lines don't smear. Another option is a crown um, or colored pencil that wouldn't smear. So I'm also using um, Jack Richardson's semi-moist temper paints. Watercolor is another one that works great. I just love these because they're a little bit more uh, thicker as I paint. So go grab your art supplies, meet me back here so we can get started on our piano cat. Okay, the piano cat. So I already have my finished product. You can see what we're doing. Again, nine by 12 paper. It's going to be vertical. Make sure that you have your print out if you need it. And the only other thing you're gonna need is a ruler. So I have um, not a normal ruler. So I have a clear, uh, I don't know what this is called, but I'm, this is all I have is this. So the reason we're using the ruler, we're using the straight edge to create these, um, the piano keys. So they're a little bit more uh, spread out. now. This is a little bit different ruler, but if you have a normal ruler, you can see the width, and I know it's clear, the width of the ruler is the width of the key. So if that's a helpful guideline as you're drawing it. So we have that next to each other. Again, when you're looking at the top part is the first one all the way down. I'm using a permanent marker. Feel free to use a pencil and then trace it with a permanent marker, but I find the permanent marker is just as good drawing with. So. Our white paper is vertical, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fold the bottom, keeping it vertical to meet the top so we kinda know where the paws are going to be, which is the first line. Go ahead and crease it. Again, we have our invisible line so we know where our middle is. Um, as you can see, there's the center. We wanna make sure our paws, the two paws are much they're pretty much in the middle of the bottom half of your paper because if you don't put them that far down then it's not you're not able to fit the majority of the cat's body so i'm gonna get my marker ready again there's my invisible line i'm moving down so i'm moving all the way down here but in the bottom part of our paper the middle section which is right about here that's where i'm going to draw his paws so it is a curved line is the top of his paw and then I just do three bumps. Again, make sure my paws are kind of in the same area, curved. One, two, three. Now his paws are a little bit, they're, um, the keys are below that. So I'm gonna start on this side of the paper, not on the top of his paws, a little below. Straight line, jump over the paw, straight line, jump over the paw, all the way across. So this is when your ruler comes in handy. Now, you don't wanna to make too many keys. Like I said, the thick part of this, where this finger, this finger, I'm gonna use that as my guide. So I start from the straight line all the way to the bottom. So the inside of my ruler, I'm gonna meet up with that first line. I don't wanna draw over the paw. Again, the thickness of my ruler is the thickness of the piano key. So I'm just gonna keep matching up the inside of my ruler, following the outside. If you don't know how to use ruler, you have to hold it down. If you don't hold it down, I'm just gonna use the back and I move it, this is what happens. Then you have a line that's not even straight. The purpose of the ruler is to make a straight line. So you have to hold the ruler to press against the ruler. You're not just laying your marker next to it. You're pushing against the edge of the ruler to get that straight, line. It helps guide your pencil or marker down. Again, measuring the inside of the ruler. Then I don't know. Nope. See, perfect. Go straight there. So there are my keys. And now the other parts of the keys, it's not 
We're not doing them on every single one. It's technically on every other one if you actually look at a piano. So I'm gonna skip the first block and start on my second block using the ruler. I'm gonna move over some. And it's not the full length of that line. It's about halfway. And then I just use my marker and then I color it in. Again, I'm gonna skip this one, move to the next one. And I kind of want to make sure they're the same height. So I even took this and then I can mark it. There's one, skip it. There's one. Then I can come down here, make the straight part. And again, move it over. I want to make sure they're somewhat of the same size, if not no big deal. Okay, again, because they're all the same length, I want to make sure I measure it. I've got to move my ruler. So I'm going to skip it, make my mark, skip it, make my mark, nothing on the end. Again, move my ruler. There we go. So now that we've got the paws, we're going to move up to the cats. The first two lines are the side of the body. Um, and they're just going to be a slight diagonal. So I'm going to start at the top all the way to the piano and stop. Make sure it's even across. Again, a very slight diagonal. Then we're going to come down for the ears a bit, a diagonal the other way. And then we're going to connect it across with a straight line. So there's your cat shape. Inside of the ears, we're going to add small triangles. Then we're going to do the eyes. The eyes are cut somewhat on the outside. Again, you can always do the eyes you like to do. I like the big goofy eyes. So two big circles and then a line across for your eyebrow. And then the inside of the eye, we do a small circle and then a smaller little U on the inside and then color the outside of that. Smaller circle, a U on the inside, color around it. So that's that highlight that's in the eye. If you want to add some eyelashes coming off the eyelid, maybe some eyebrows. Now his nose is right in the middle of these two, a little bit farther down. Now, I don't know if you've ever really looked at an animal's nose. The shape of the nose is not normally a triangle. It's like a bathing suit bottom is like what I like to call it. So you're going to start with a straight top and then come down on the sides a bit. And then in, we're going to connect it with a slight curve. I don't know if you can see right here. It's like where your leg would come out and then the bottom has a straight line. So you don't want the next line to touch each other. It's a curve going down a curve going down. Obviously, we're going to then connect them. And then I like to draw a circle up here in the top and then coming off the bottom of the nose, we're going to draw a straight line vertically with a small line horizontally. And then his snout is going to start on the side of the nose, it's going to curve and it's going to come right before that smile. Like a C. We're going to do the other side too. I try to make sure I match them up as best as possible. And then just some dots where his whiskers are going to be going in a minute. And then our cat is like a calico cat or a striped orange and white cat. So we're going to add these little long rectangles because that's what's going to stay white because the paper's white and then we'll paint around it. So we're going to do three at the top of the head. So you're going to do two parallel lines next to each other, connect the small horizontal, and they don't have to be the same length and size. So three in between the eyes and then we're going to do several going down the side of the body. So two lines, connect them. Again, you don't want to run over the mouth, so these may be shorter. 
And then whiskers is our last step. So three whiskers on each side of the, the nose. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you have drawn your piano cat. Again, you have your hand out. Take your permanent marker, make sure the top is untight. We're gonna go ahead and put that away. And the next step, we're gonna go ahead and get our, I'm using the tempera semi-moist um, paints. You could use watercolor, you could use temper paints, you could use paint sticks. So because I'm using paint, I'm gonna have a paper towel and your water and your brush. Make sure um, a your water and brush etiquette, which means how do we use it properly without making a mess. So we always make sure we pull it out. If it's dripping, just gently wipe it off the side. We don't wanna tap it. As soon as you tap it, there is a lot of water flying and it makes a noise and it's just not good. It sprays things. When you're cleaning off each color, you wanna gently bounce it off the bottom. Notice no water should be moving and I'm not stirring it. If you're stirring it, and you're making noise, it's gonna possibly splash and make a mess. So we always wanna keep the water cup still. We don't wanna pick up the water cup. We wanna leave it on the tray or table so we don't make a mess. Um, I'm gonna start with the orange cat, and then we're gonna, you're gonna pick a background color, and then our key, our piano keys are going to stay white. So that's the bottom part. His, um, the area where his whiskers come out of, that's gonna stay white, and then obviously his, where his eyeball is. So the cat and the little stripes are gonna stay white. So I'm gonna get my brush, get it wet, find my orange, gently rub. This is temper cake, so we have to wake them up, kind of like watercolors, gently rubbing over the top. Start at the top, and you're gonna work your way down. Now I have a big brush. I might switch to my um, smaller brush because this one's not gonna be able to paint in as easily. Okay, so I'm gonna round brush. That's much easier to paint those little areas. As I come, I want to stop at those stripes, paint around them, because they are staying white. Eyelid. If you did do an eyelid, his eyelid is the same color as his skin, but his eyeball is not. Again, I hit a stripe, go around it. So you are going to have to take your time as you paint your piano playing cat, because you don't want to paint in the as soon as you get down to the paws, yes, the paws are painted orange because there's already a lot of white with the piano. We don't want to exclude that. It does make him look better because you can see his paws are touching the piano. So I have painted my cat. I'm gonna clean off my brush by gently rubbing the bottom, wiping off the side, dabbing it. Now for the color around or inside the ears, we're gonna do that. So it's a pinkish reddish, depending on what you have access to. Make it more pink is all I do is add less paint, more water to my brush and it makes a lighter color. Now we're gonna wait a minute because um, with watercolor, any kind of wet paint, if you paint too quickly, as if I paint the background, which is right next to the orange, those two colors could bleed together. Um, you can dab it up with a paper towel, but that doesn't always, um, it just, if you give it a minute to dry, if you're using paint sticks, it dries pretty quickly. But again, just wait a minute, then you're gonna pick.
traditional piano cat. So I may pick a new color today. Um, I think I'm gonna go with purple. Purple is a complementary color to orange. Again, waking it up, start at the top. And I'm just painting. And this is why we start at the top on both, because if you start at the top on your cat, it should be drier than the bottom. And at any point, if it does bleed, you just get a paper towel and you can dab up the paint. So again, gently get my brush clean, wipe it off the side. And we have finished our piano cat. Again, make sure that you clean up your space. If you have any watercolor paints, make sure you know how to put them away or if you leave them. A lot of the times I like to leave them open on my tray. It allows the paint to dry because if right now, if you look at my paints, they have little puddles on them. And if I just picked it up and leaned it up, all the paint would drip out. So always leave those flat, either open to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and put my brushes where they belong so they can soak get my water and my paper towel put away. So make sure you follow your procedures for keeping your area clean. And as you can see, our piano cat is done. I hope you enjoyed drawing and painting your piano cat with me. All right, guys, thank you for joining me with this piano cat. I hope you share your creations with me. Don't forget to tag me if you create something. I'd love to see your work. Thank you.